Tony Capco is one of the co-founders of the Convertibles. Yes. Tell me about Tony. Grew up in the Valley, you know, and um, got into music at an early age, about nine, ten years old. Wow. And my mother bought me a little toy drum set early on, and I really never stopped playing since, wow. you know, yeah. <laughs> Studied at Musicians Institute for right. a little while, but um, studied with some great teachers way before I went to MI and after I went to MI, and and growing up with uh, with the influences of the great drummers of that era, the Buddy mm -hmm. Riches, mm -hmm. uh, Gene Krupa, um, uh, Louis Belson, and seeing all these great drummers that were the major influences on on what drumming has become today. Right. Um, that. Um, I think with the new generation, um, don't really get or didn't really get an opportunity to experience that, which right. I think was kind of a golden yeah. generation to me. Yeah, um, got into teaching myself and been playing professionally since I was seventeen. Yeah, I've I've met some of your students along the way, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, you I mean you you have cast a wide net through Southern California mm -hmm. for sure. You studied under Joe Picaro, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And his son Jeff was in the band Toto. Uh, that band was formed by Jeff and his brothers. That's right. Yeah. yeah, well, Jeff is one of the, probably one of the most influential drummers um, uh, I grew up with, you know, um, and a lot of guys from my era are very, very familiar with Jeff Picaro and his playing. Mm -hmm. um, but Hale is one of the great group drummers of our time. So uh, you said you studied for about a, a year with uh, Joe? I, I studied on and off with Joe Picaro when I was going to Musicians Institute in Hollywood. Oh, okay. And there was a collection of great teachers there. At the time, mm -hmm. there was guys like Steve Houghton and Efren Toro and wow. Casey Sherrill, and it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. And just great teachers that, that came as guest instructors and also that were in-house teachers. And Joe Picaro was one of the head teachers there. You are a co-founder of the Convertibles. Yes. So how did that come about? Thing is, is that me and Don have known each other for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 leader of of this band, mm -hmm. um, and um, Don had formed the Convertibles back in the eighties, wow. which was a group that was um, that was playing the same circuit as Tower Power. Jack Mack and the Heart Attack, Billy Vera and the Beaters, they were all kind of working that whole Hollywood circuit. So this resurgence of this group, is it's kind of a rebook, a boot of a band from the 80s, um, but it's the, the material is completely different yeah. than it used, used to be back right. then. Right. Um, the arrangements are completely different. Mm -hmm. Obviously the players are different. And the only original member actually from that era was is Dawn, really. What's it like to play with real live Rhythm and Blues Band. I thought I found a love that glittered like gold, a sweet thing but apple of my eye. Then I saw her driving right out of my life in a brand new silver blue Cadillac. I would have been my last dollar and a shirt right off my back But I know was a real thing Not just a flash Not just a flash Cause I've been fooled for the first and the last time Well, there's nothing quite like it because, you know, that art, that style of music is mm -hmm is um, such a part of um, the American influence, you know, in music. And it's got such a soulful groove to it. Mm -hmm. um, and to play with a band of this caliber. What you gonna do when nobody wants to fool with you? Oh, in a bar, living in the real world. MJ and and Herbert are amazing vocalists, mm -hmm. um, and the caliber of the horn section that I'm working with, and Don's amazing arrangements of yeah. these tunes. 
it spans from the early 60s to modern music yeah. today. You know, it's really, it's the way we're presenting the music in kind of a unique format with the big, with the big horn arrangements. Yeah. You know, we're playing country songs with horns. With it's the, amazing. The horn section. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're doing, yeah. uh, you're, the spectrum that you cover is incredible. Yeah. And it's very entertaining. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, is... You don't have to be from a particular uh, generation mm -hmm. because all these songs are familiar. I don't know how you've done it, but you've pulled together a lot of talent, picked great songs. You're very entertaining. Uh, you have a great package. Mm -hmm. You guys are ready to go. Like you're ready to jump to that mm -hmm. next level. Yeah. Since you've reformed, mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have kind of taken off. Yeah. You've got like a regional kind of a success story. What's it going to take to get it across the nation? Because you guys are spectacular. I mean, you're so much fun. You, you, do, you do a lot of corporate events. Mm -hmm. You do uh, music festivals, yeah. state fairs, things like yeah. that. I just think it has everything to do with um, um, commitment within the group, but it also has so much to do with management. Tony, yeah. always a pleasure, my man. Thank you, Bernie. Good to see you nice again. Nice to see you as always. All right, stay in touch. <laughs> I definitely And, and will. I'm coming over for some of those figs. Fantastic. And rabbit. All you? right. And rabbit, my Rabbit stew. To, boom. Put it in the pot. <laughs> All I remember mostly is uh, about my, my childhood is being around a lot of Italians, a lot of, a lot of food, a lot of family, um, spending a lot of time in my parent, in my grandparents' backyard in Granada Hills, wow. uh, picking figs and wow. you know, uh, uh, seriously, my grandfather had a um, uh, like a little farm of rabbits and stuff.